So what I'll be talking about is how to build an interactive marketplace, uh, especially in this setting of an integrated supply chain of APIs. So, um, so let's get started, right? Uh, okay, so uh, I'll first talk a little bit about um, an API marketplace and then why it's so special in an integrated API supply chain setting. And then I'll move on to a couple of API marketplace patterns that we have seen over time uh, and uh, then touch upon the building blocks that are needed to build a successful API marketplace. Uh, and then uh, mention how you can start building your own API marketplace and finally wrap up with a few key takeaways. Okay, so, um, so if you uh, think marketplaces uh, or hear the word marketplace, uh, this is a typical picture of a marketplace that uh, we will uh, think about. So the a marketplace for us that will uh, come to our mind would be a place where there are lots of people and these people are buyers who are trying to uh, sell their wares and then a lot of uh, customers who are uh, walking about who are looking at what is there to be bought uh, trying out various things uh, and uh, then basically selecting uh, uh, the goods and then experiencing the services and buying them. So it's a it's a place where you bring together all of these uh, parties together, uh, and it's also a place where each party gets a different experience based on the role that they are playing. So uh, a very simple definition of a marketplace would be that it's a location where people gather to both sell and buy commodities. So now today we're talking about API marketplaces. So um, what's the difference in the definition of an API marketplace? So if you look at the definition, it's not much different. It's just that it's again a meeting place, but we don't just say buyers and sellers. We say API providers, uh, the people who designed and created the APIs who want to provide them, who would publish their APIs onto this uh, marketplace, and then API consumers, the people who would use these APIs uh, within the applications, who would search and subscribe to these APIs uh, from within this uh, API marketplace. So it, in, in a very uh, conceptual way, it's the same uh, thing, but uh, we, we go into a little bit more detail from an API specific point of view, right? So uh, in today's age, uh, what is so special about an API marketplace? So I'm sure if I ask this question from uh, different people, there would be different answers, but then I feel that these four points would definitely come up uh, amongst these different answers. So the first point uh, is that an API marketplace is a virtual marketplace. So the picture that we saw at the start, uh, that was a physical marketplace, but an API marketplace is a virtual marketplace. So uh, now for a technologist who is going to provide that marketplace, what they need to keep in mind is that though it's a virtual marketplace, that experience that is sought is still real. So producers and consumers, the API providers and the API consumers still need to feel that same experience. So that same buying and selling feeling needs to be there. Then uh, the second point of importance that stems from this is that an API marketplace has no physical boundaries. Now, because it has no physical boundaries, that means it has more reach. And then again, from a marketplace provider's point of view, that means that marketplace needs to be connected. 
It needs to be accessible and available to everyone who's authorized to get onto that marketplace. Uh, then the third uh, important uh, point is obviously the commodity that is uh, in this marketplace or the, the commodity that is featured in this marketplace. So uh, the commodity is an API. Now, what's so different here? So a, a typical marketplace would have goods and services. And then if we, if we compare an API marketplace to a digital marketplace, which is also to a certain extent technology driven, uh, still it's an end product. An API can't be called an end product because though it's a complete product that is going to be sold and used, it in itself is going to start uh, a new journey by creating new opportunities to the consumer who's going to subscribe and make use of that API in their applications. So then with that, there are certain things that are expected in this marketplace that needs to happen. So for example, uh, in, a, in an API marketplace, the, the API consumer needs to be able to try it out and see what the API would do when an API is invoked. What is the response that they will get? Because accordingly, they will know how the application will behave. Then the fourth or the final point is that an API marketplace is technology driven. So uh, this means that obviously the users who are going to be stakeholders in this API marketplace would be uh, uh, tech, tech savvy people. So even the business users who would be part of this will still be tech, tech savvy people. So that means uh, the capabilities that are provided from the marketplace will also be uh, uh, will also be expected to be uh, in that direction. Okay. Now talking about API marketplaces and uh, looking at API marketplaces, I think the best way to uh, give the audience a good feel about it is to mention a. API marketplace, which has caused a lot of upheaval in the industry. So Rapid API is a marketplace, uh, an API marketplace, which today is one of the largest uh, such API marketplaces in the industry. Now, uh, this infographic is about the growth of Rapid API marketplace. And this is the growth that has happened from the start of 2020 the year of the pandemic. So um, if you look at it, uh, if so they have basically uh, broken it down into different categories, the different growth parameters. So uh, the number of developers who have basically come on has increased by sixfold uh, compared to the same period last year. And then if you look at the number of APIs and the number of uh, API invocations that have gone through uh, the uh, this API marketplace. So the the number of APIs today on this marketplace is around twenty thousand APIs, which is a huge amount of APIs. And uh, a trillion API calls, they say, uh, averaging to today. So that's again a large number of API invocations. Now. Uh, so this increase has happened uh, very recently and they have also started, so this was a public marketplace and they had also started a new initiative of having teams uh, and using uh, an enterprise API hub so that it's private to a particular organization or a group of people. And that initiative has also uh, kicked off really well. So essentially they see that uh, there are 18,000 new organizations and 1,000 new organizations are being created weekly. So that's very rapid growth. And um, if you finally look at uh, the current uh, situation of the world, so again, if you look at the COVID-19 related APIs, 
then a, a large number of those invocations are related to this COVID-19 uh, uh, related uh, API. So that, that actually shows that an API marketplace and then APIs actually uh, gives uh, gives people opportunities to expand, to grow, to reach out, connect, even though you're physically restrained. So, uh, so if you uh, take a step back and uh, think of what these statistics mean, so these are numbers that I was just mentioning, looking at the infographic. So if you really look at those numbers and if you sum it up, these all of these put together simply reinforce that uh, API marketplaces are something really uh, is something which is really valuable in the integrated supply chain of APIs today. So if you look at the volume of APIs exposed and invoked, so that uh, it, it clearly shows that uh, some of these APIs uh, would probably be the legacy integrations that are, that are there in organizations in across uh, different uh, platforms. And these are still in demand. And then reuse is still uh, is, is very much promoted because it's uh, through APIs are easy to access and they're easy to use. And then APIs are becoming the most common uh, building block. So all of these basically definitely mean that uh, APIs are the new products of the 21st century. Then uh, if you look at the volume of organizations who are involved, so enterprise marketplaces are definitely being sought more. That is enterprises are looking at building marketplaces, getting involved in marketplaces, being part of marketplaces in order to create synergies by using APIs, sharing APIs and so on. And then finally, the volume of developers and paid subscriptions and so on. So marketplaces are the start uh, of innovation. So an innovation basically uh, is definitely filling more revenue. So, uh, so definitely marketplaces are uh, a mandate component in today's uh, uh, API uh, first uh, API led uh, 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 industry. So having talked about marketplaces uh, and then the importance of that today. So let's next look at a couple of patterns uh, that we have seen. So we have been working with um, uh, our customers throughout the past 15 years. And uh, these are some of the patterns that we have come across. Uh, and all of these are patterns uh, uh, that have come through federation. So, so a marketplace is a place where you get uh, APIs that are owned by multiple parties. And then they are uh, basically set up for consumption by uh, uh, API subscribers. So we have identified five such main patterns. So let's take a look at each one of those. So, uh, so the first pattern is uh, the internal mar marketplace. So in an internal marketplace, uh, so this is a closed marketplace, which is limited to a single organization. Now, um, so you might say, think like if it's a single organization, why do you call it federated? But in this single organization, you have multiple uh, departments or units uh, or teams even. So each one of these different units basically have their own services and they basically want these to be reused across the organization so that uh, each one of these uh, teams or units won't be recreating them all the time. So the, the pattern here that we see is each one of these units would basically uh, create an API and they would own that API. So they have uh, autonomy in owning that API and deciding what goes into that API, what the interface is and so on. And they would basically publish this API uh, uh, according to a uh, uh, time scale that is 
uh, in accordance to that uh, particular unit's uh, uh, schedule. However, since it belongs to a uh, organization's marketplace, there is a certain amount of governance that needs to be adhered to. So in order to, uh, in order to keep a level of quality in that marketplace. So uh, now, uh, in order to do that, so uh, we basically need to be able to do very good uh, visibility control uh, because uh, uh, that organization's marketplace would be hosting uh, APIs that are coming from multiple departments. And some of these APIs might not be relevant to uh, to everyone who wants to consume APIs. So visibility control is a, is, a, is a key feature that is required from the underlying API platform in order to uh, uh, support this capability. Now, uh, so for each, pat uh, each API pattern, we also very briefly look at like how this marketplace can be deployed. So for an internal marketplace, we see two such patterns. So the first pattern is where uh, the, the, the publisher and the developer portal components of this marketplace are 100% uh, are shared. So each one of these departments will basically make use of that same publisher and create the, and design the APIs to lifecycle management and then publish it into that shared developer portal. So that's where that uh, a very good visibility control capability needs to come because maybe um, some of these APIs that are created by department one are valid only for people who are uh, supposed to consume uh, financial related APIs and so on. But each one of these departments might still have their own gateway so that the runtime uh, side of things are handled by uh, these departments uh, or units separately. So the second flavor of this same pattern, which is driven purely by the second way of deploying this, is where each one of these units have their own API publisher and their developer portal. So in this case, that autonomy is a bit more because they basically will be creating APIs on their own publisher they will be publishing it into their own developer portal. But at the same time, they will also have a central marketplace developer portal. So, so, uh, when, so not all APIs might go into this central marketplace. It might be only APIs that they wish that uh, to, uh, to uh, it might be only APIs that they want to be share to that they need other departments also to use that they would be pushing onto this central marketplace so in 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 order to support this pattern so the underlying marketplace uh, the underlying api management platform uh, also needs to support the ability to do uh, publishing to multiple developer portals uh, so the second uh, API marketplace uh, pattern that we have seen is the pocket, the partner marketplace. Now, the partner marketplace is uh, can be called an extension of the internal marketplace. So now, now in the in the internal marketplace, uh, we say that departments or units uh, publish their APIs conceptually to a central uh, uh, API marketplace. Uh, a central developer portal in that marketplace. Now the consumers can be internal uh, uh, internal consumers. And then in some cases, the consumers can also be external partners who are still using that organization's API in order to uh, do certain activities. Now with time, what will happen is, uh, so this organization belongs to a certain industry. And then these partners are also providing some sort of service in that same industry. So what happens is these partners also come up with certain services which are not really provided by this organization. 
but still enhances the value that is provided by uh, this overall uh, services that are uh, uh, given. So what they will also do is, they will also come up with some services and then with the consent of the organization, they will also be allowed to publish some of those APIs onto that same uh, marketplace so that consumers can they make use of both the organization's APIs as well as the partner's APIs when they create uh, applications. So then the value addition, the value that the end users of those applications get is going to be much more. Now, when that happens in, in a marketplace, so the underlying API platform essentially basically needs to uh, have the ability to integrate with external identity. So, so far in the internal marketplace, they were only dealing with identities in that, in, in that single organization. But the moment um, partners also start publishing APIs because uh, it's not consumers, but people who are actually publishing APIs, administering APIs, then uh, that underlying API platform needs to start integrating with external identities within the administrative cycles of the marketplace. So that's a, a capability that is a good example, BNY Mellon, where they started off with the internal uh, marketplace, but then later on, they expanded it into becoming a partner marketplace as well. Then now, now so we are now looking at marketplaces uh, with which are slowly going across the line and which are slowly opening up. So the next marketplace pattern is the closed group class uh, marketplace. So the closed group marketplace is where uh, so it's no longer limited to a single organization now. Different organizations can basically push APIs into the marketplace. So different organizations comes into the picture. They might have their own gateways and they might push their APIs into that conceptual single marketplace uh, components. Uh, but the, the, the reason for calling this a closed group is because these belong to a theme. So it's either that all of these organizations are working towards a common goal or else they are, they are in, the, in a particular industry and they're bound together by maybe a particular regulation or a directive. So that is when we call it a closed group marketplace and not anyone can just come and say, okay, I want to be part of this marketplace. So you need to be invited into that marketplace in order to be able to create APIs and push APIs into that marketplace. So uh, in such a case, uh, basically APIs then, uh, so the, the, the need comes in uh, to create such marketplaces in order to standardize APIs in that particular area. So a good example is the uh, open banking initiative that started off in Europe, but is now all over the world. And, um, so we have a standard specification uh, for different regions in the world and a closed group marketplace for banks within a particular region will expose APIs based on, a, uh, on the same uh, API interface. So APIs essentially will be created or uh, making use of a, of a fixed specification, of a fixed definition. So the underlying platform essentially needs to be able to create an API based on an API definition. So that's a, a key requirement from the underlying uh, API management uh, platform. Then another example is um, where, so uh, another example for a, uh, for a themed uh, closed group is in a government. So government basically works toward a particular goal and the government has different ministries, departments, who are also supposed to take focused areas, but working towards that same goal. And uh, so each one of these basically will be part of this unified marketplace 
uh, exposing their services as APIs and the, the, the consumers can make use of all of these services within this closed group uh, in order to uh, get the services of this overall government. So that's another example. So now we move on to a more open model, which is the shared revenue marketplace. So an, a very, uh, so example here is simply rapid API. It's an open marketplace. Anyone can basically come and uh, register and then basically uh, uh, push their APIs here. So uh, you basically uh, do this with the main intention of uh, doing some revenue sharing. And uh, uh, in this case, so uh, in some cases, uh, the marketplace provider will uh, provide all the components of that marketplace. We'll get into that in the next section. And in some cases, the marketplace provider will provide some of the components like the publisher and the developer portal, but some of the runtime components would be uh, would uh, is something that the, the different uh, API providers can bring into this ecosystem. So again, the underlying uh, 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 API management platform needs to provide extensive identity federation and the ability to integrate with heterogeneous IDPs and gateways in this case. Then the final uh, pattern that we see is the aggregator marketplace. Now, so far, uh, API providers were pushing in APIs and then they were being consumed and uh, in that same format. So in the aggregator pattern, API providers do push in APIs, but then the, the consumption happens at a product level. So these APIs or parts of these APIs are combined into a value bundle. And it's this bundle or that API product that is consumed by the API uh, consumers. So, so a good example is Epigate, where they basically operate in the telco world and they have hubs, uh, where each one of these hubs basically are serving uh, different, uh, te te uh, uh, different telecom operators and uh, they get providers to provide APIs, then they bundle uh, these APIs together to create value uh, bundles, which are which the telecom providers then purchase in order to uh, serve their uh, consumer base. So the 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 revenue sharing happens in this case in a staggered manner. So again, the main driver is revenue sharing, but it happens in a staggered way where the hub basically so the telecom operators pay the hub owner and then the hub basically keeps a certain percentage and then pays back the api providers uh, based on the uh, on how many apis they were they used and so on so an extension to this is where you can have like multiple hubs where you basically push some of these apis or some of these bundles into an additional hub and then uh, you basically create new bundles as well and sell to other vendors. So uh, in this case, the underlying API platform needs to be able to support the ability to create API products. Okay. So, so when we were going through the patterns, there are certain things that I uh, highlighted that should be uh, uh, they are from the uh, underlying API management platform. But anyway, let's just take a quick look at what the uh, required components are from a uh, API management platform when you are uh, building an API marketplace uh, for you. So, so one thing that we need to make clear is uh, that an API marketplace is not just a developer portal. So it's, it's actually a complete ecosystem which has several other components to it. So let's simply uh, quickly take a look at these components. So, so we'll start with the most common components, which is the publisher and the developer portal. So, uh, so the publisher is where the journey starts for an API. So you need to be able to create APIs 
from uh, different ways and for different protocols. So uh, the platform needs to provide that capability. So you either have a, a Swagger definition uh, through which you create an API, and then you basically, uh, so you, you have the ability to have different types of users in this API publisher. The technical user who would define the resources, he would fine tune the resources if they were generated from an existing definition and who would attach the different throttling policies, the security policies, the endpoint uh, definitions, the mediation extensions, and so on. And then the business user, the, the API product owner, who would come in and be able to um, create uh, the business plans, define the business plans, the end of the business the information, and so on. And then finally, uh, it's through the API publisher that uh, a mashup of a API resources would be created to create an API product also. So all of these capabilities are things that are done in the publisher. And then lifecycle management is also another important thing that needs to happen at the publisher. Uh, and the ability to test out your API before you actually push it out to a developer portal. So. So the underlying platform needs to provide these basic capabilities in a API publisher. So once the API is published, then it becomes visible on a developer portal. This is where, uh, so the capabilities that are required here would be the ability for a, uh, for a API subscriber to do self-service signup because um, these are external parties sometimes. And then if when you're doing self-service signup, maybe you will be bringing in a third party identity with you. You, you necessarily might not be uh, uh, signing up into the, the in-house identity system. Uh, and then you will basically log into a landing page which would give you some information about what these APIs are, uh, the, uh, and it would uh, give you information in the language that you uh, would want to see this information in. It would give you maybe some basic details if you're a basic user on how to make use of APIs in applications and stuff like that. Then if you are looking for a particular API, that the ability to search for APIs using categories, uh, tags or even keywords then to try out APIs. And then once you're satisfied with an API uh, to be basically to subscribe to APIs, uh, generate SDKs and then provide your own comments. So these are the capabilities that the underlying platform needs to provide uh, uh, for the developer portal. Then, and so the hidden components that we mentioned earlier, so it's not just the publish and the developer portal, security. So security, the security component essentially needs to provide federation for external IDPs. If you're bringing in uh, uh, external identities when you're logging into these different portals, then single sign-on across these portals uh, then API security. So the APIs that you're going to expose as managed APIs, they need to be protected. So OAuth um, using GWT tokens, API keys, certificate-based API security, or just basic auth even. Uh, then the ability to provide final grained access control. So in some cases, a particular API can have different resources. Some of these would be just read resources. Some of these would be write resources. So you will want to control uh, the invocation of the right resources more than the read resources. That means you would want to have OAuth scopes, uh, specific OAuth scopes assigned or bound to these um, uh, right resources. So you as, uh, can, you should be able to do that through the underlying uh, platform. And then the ability to do threat uh, protection uh, and to do a full audit of the API from security perspective uh, before it's published. Uh, so then governance. Now, um, so we mentioned full lifecycle management, a framework to do full lifecycle management and customize it as it's need needed in your organization. 
and then provide control through workflows. So in some cases, when you create uh, applications, when you subscribe to applications, when you generate keys, you would want certain checks to happen. So workflows uh, can give you that ability to do the controlling that is needed. And even when you sign up to the developer portal. Uh, and then analytics is another very important component that is required in a marketplace in order to uh, see what's happening. So dashboards, which would uh, give you operational insights and business insights uh, from the provider's point of view and then from the subscriber's point of view. And then analytics will also be the uh, engine, the underlying engine to provide alerts uh, and real-time notifications for rules that you have defined for administration uh, ac actions that needs to be triggered if let's say uh, API is not working properly, if there is abnormal usage of an API and so on. And of course, monetization. So a marketplace without monetization is useless. So the ability to link to a billing engine to uh, basically be able to create accounts for the different API providers, uh, for the consumers, and then to a way to sync up the usage from the marketplace to the uh, billing engine, uh, create billing plans on the marketplace, and then uh, map those. All of these are things that are required uh, from the underlying API manager platform uh, in order to support a very good uh, marketplace. Okay, so we have gone through the different components that are needed in order to build a marketplace. So let's just quickly walk through the points that are needed uh, that you need to do when you are building your own marketplace. So first of all, select an API platform that provides you with all the <clears throat> capabilities that are needed in your marketplace. So you saw the different capabilities that are needed for different patterns and so on. So pick the uh, pick a provider which gives you all of those capabilities. Then uh, an API marketplace is not just the API management uh, platform it's a set of other components and on top of that it's an ecosystem so you need to also think about expansion into applications application marketplace uh, using that security component to provide security for the applications governance monitoring and so on and then it's not just technical components how do you socialize the users there so how do you provide incentives so more people come to your marketplace, are attracted to that? How do you organize activities like hackathons, uh, workshops, so that uh, people again start using this and are incentivized to basically push on more APIs into this? And then define clear communication channels so that you can push information out to them uh, whenever there is a new update that you would like to share. So summing it up, essentially an API marketplace is definitely a mandatory value addition when building an integrated API supply chain. Interactions matter. You still need to feel that buying and selling experience, uh, even though it's a digital marketplace. And then you need to pick that proper marketplace pattern that will fit your organization. So we talked about five marketplace patterns, which one fits you best. And then what are the components that are needed accordingly? And then don't just stop at that API platform. Think about the overall ecosystem. So how you basically, um, increase on the technical components and how you expand uh, expand on the technical components and how you uh, extend on the non-technical components on basically socializing the humans, the stakeholders who are going to be part of that. So um, I guess uh, that's what I wanted to talk about today about how you can uh, build an interactive marketplace. 
Uh, I hope that was um, insightful. And if you have um, any questions, you can always reach out to me. You have my contact details.